Hi guys and welcome to this week's Simply Scuba. <laughs> This week's Scuba Tube is sponsored by How to Survive Being Stranded at Sea. Hey guys and welcome to this week's Scuba Tube, so let's dive straight into the news. Uh, so first off, divers are now waiting 90 minutes uh, to get collected by helicopter, it seems. Hello! Uh, so sorry, I have Netflix. <laughs> Netflix uh, so a diver who suffered from breathing problems had to wait 90 minutes until he was rescued at sea. So the man who, um, for some reason, doesn't want to be identified, that's fine. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, he he um, was diving in Portland in Dorset uh, when he became unwell. The skipper of the boat then called the Coast Guard at 1.40 p.m., but the helicopter didn't arrive until 10 past 3 that afternoon. Uh, so the reason why the chopper took so long to get to the unnamed diver was because it had to come all the way from Wales. So we'll put a map of how far away they are for people who aren't in the UK. Damn it! No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Um, but what's uh, but what's sort of odd about this story is that the day before uh, the accident, the Dorset Coast Guard's helicopter was axed due to just cutting costs. So literally, they went to his like, "Well, we can't afford this now. It's an axe." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he would have had like Little for cash uh, a, a two-minute wait, as opposed to an Not, hour and yeah. a half. It's just bad timing, wasn't it, really? So like, come on, mate, you should have gone that day, day before, two days before, and you would have been all right. 90 minutes, though, must have got well. But like, the skip was like, yeah, so... Uh... Yeah, because if he had a serious decompression illness, that first hour makes a huge difference. But he was, yeah. Just sat there. Sat there on the boat. Tetris. Do, 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 do. No Candy Crush. We well, are not endorsed by Candy Crush whatsoever. <laughs> not in any way. Not in any way. <laughs> but yeah, no. But yeah, apparently he's all right though, isn't he? Well, he's in hospital being treated. Yeah, unnamed diver is. Yeah, unnamed okay. diver. I reckon that's his actual name. It's unnamed. <laughs> My name's unnamed diver. Yeah, but what's your name? No, it's unnamed. Anyway. <laughs> Schoolboys are in trouble. God, why did I write that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> 12 schoolboys are being treated for carbon monoxide poisoning. The pupils were rushed to hospital after their scuba diving lesson, and one, uh, one, of, the, one of the kids, only 14, had been, had been given oxygen by the school nurse, which apparently saved his life. But yeah, so a police investigation has been opened alongside with the, uh, the, the health, and health and Safety Executive and the Public Health of England. So they're all looking in so what went wrong with this yeah. class? So they were scuba diving, learning to scuba dive, and then yeah, somehow these 12 kids got poisoning. Anyway, they're now looking into the company who supplied the air tanks. And because of this, divers have been told to return any tanks from the company very, very urgently. Yeah, I mean, they teach you this in your course, but you kind of forget about it sometimes and yeah, bad air feel. You can usually taste it, but if you're on like your first course, you won't really know what, what to, to taste. taste. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as long as it's from a reputable place, if you can, take a look at that compressor, make sure the exhaust is far away from the inlet. Um, it's just a bad one. Yeah, the fact that they're having to recall, they're recalling quite a lot, aren't they? If, you, if, if, yeah. if they filled it and you haven't used it yet, you got to bring it back to that dive centre. Yeah. I mean, if you're worried, depending on what dive centre, we're not going to say it, but we put, we'll put a link below for you guys to check out, just in case if you have used that as well. But then in theory, if you do use that one, you're probably aware of the scenario. Hopefully. Hopefully. If not, we have, we have saved your life <laughs> and you owe us some money. <laughs> uh, so moving swiftly on, um, this is a different way to watch the eclipse. So on the 21st of August, the moon will pass over, over the sun <laughs> In front, of In front of the sun. <laughs> I um, told you, I didn't have time this morning. Uh, and in Hopskin, Hopkins, Hopkinsville. Hopkinsville. Uh, this is what, Kentucky? Yeah. Somewhere in the States. Uh, they're celebrating by going scuba diving. Uh, the event has got a massive buzz about it, uh, and it isn't just from local divers. Divers from uh, sort of all around the world are actually going there because they're going to have this special event where you can witness the eclipse whilst underwater. Yeah, which would be cool. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, they were saying that the the eclipse is actually happening at midday, ah. and where they're situated, it's literally bang in the middle yeah. of the lake. So you can look up and go, it's it's light. It's dark. It's dark. Only my torch. 
Yeah, that's no, cool. And so, uh, so as long as you're certified, you're welcome to join the centre in this cool event, and uh, we'll put a link below on where to find it. Yeah, I need to go now. Then, 20, it's going to take twenty. It's going to take ages to get to <laughs> whateverville. Yeah, Kentucky. Kentucky. I think it's Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so let's start talking about what's in the news and start talking about the Simply Scuba 35 liter dry bag. Uh, the dry bag is a PVC coated tarpaulin roll top dry bag uh, that will keep all your essentials dry in it, uh, even if it's sort of water, raining and whatnot. Um, 35 litres of storage provides tons of space, you can fit sort of everything that you want in that pretty much, uh, even your fins, and, uh, and it comes with an adjustable removable shoulder strap. Uh, so whether you want to keep your dry stuff dry or your wet stuff contained, um, check out our 35 litre dry bag. You can thank the hiking world for that. Uh... Yeah. Did it come from hiking? Yeah, I'm gonna say yes. It didn't definitely didn't come from scuba. Staying silent. So a charter captain who's known to hand feed sharks has been bitten pretty severely by a sea creature. Yeah. A sea creature. Now take note, I didn't say shark. Now this is because the captain in question doesn't want them to, you know, doesn't want there to be a pitchfork hunt for the shark. So he's keeping mum. He won't tell the authorities what it was. And it hasn't even reported the bite as well. So he's literally keeping mum. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, so he wants to protect the shark. Sorry, I mean sea creature. Yeah. And what's good though, he's only blaming himself. So it's like, I was feeding the shark, uh, sea creatures. <laughs> you know, it was, it, was, it was completely down to me. It's my own fault. They're wild animals. I'm completely and utterly at blame for yeah. losing my arm. Yeah, he's, a, he's an advocate for yeah, sort of marine conservation and all that, and um, and yeah, he got bitten, and everyone's like asking him, he's like, oh, okay, what, what type of shark, where was it, and whatnot, he's just, shtum, no, nothing. Um, yeah, which is, which is cool, apparently the, uh, the news stories and the news whatnot, they've, uh, they've managed to cobble together certain bits of information, but none of it's from him. He's like, no, do not blame the shark, don't go after the shark. Just leave it. It was a sea creature. Sea creature. Nessie. <laughs> it was Nessie. Nessie's getting about. Uh, so the lost wedding ring. So Mr. Turner worn his wedding ring proudly for 44 years, uh, but when roping up his riverboat, uh, the rope yanked it off his finger. Such happens. Uh, of course, John was devastated and his wife Margaret was in tears, but John didn't give up hope. Uh, when he got home, he went to his local dive centre to see if they could help, and one brave diver stood up to the plate to help John. This is, yeah, we're seeing all of these kind of stories. They're all Heroes. great. Um, so, uh, so then days later, the Turners with a friend uh, and the diver Stephen Howells, uh, armed with a magnet, Magnets? What kind of thing Some was it? specific scuba diving magnets. It's also, it can't have been a gold ring. Gold's not magnetic. Has anyone told Mr. Turner? <laughs> <laughs> Um, to, uh, to hit the waters. So after sweeping the waters for 75 minutes, uh, Mr. Lewis, who was um, the Turner's friend, gave up. Um, and then Stephen stepped in. Within 10 minutes, he'd already found the ring. Uh, so it's a fairy tale ending after all. It is, it's... apart from me finding out that he didn't realize his ring was gold <laughs> or silver. It was a knockoff. Yeah, it's basically steel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and two other. But it was a good, good thing that it was because he found it. He can then put it back. It was just like, yes. It's, not, it's never as simple as just, oh, ding, this perfect ring on the bottom. Yeah. Because. Well, murky river, it's river boat, so it's going to be the canal. It's going to be brown. Yeah, touch the bottom and pff, gone. So now, well done. Yeah, well, congratulations. What I want to know though, completely staying on that subject. Right. Wedding rings, yeah. So my mum and dad, they got their wedding rings. They can't get it past their knuckle. Okay. Because it's all like, so he must have lost weight. Yes, it's very nice of you to say, Sean. He lost weight. <laughs> Chained animals. Oh, this one's sad. I know. So just quick heads up about the article. It's a bit sad. Don't worry, it, it gets better. It has a happy ending. It does. But there are some upsetting images to come. Yes. And I'm not talking about the ones where Mark's naked, because they're... Mm, uh, yep, see, even the train <laughs> likes that idea, yeah. Anyway, to increase their tourism trade on the island of Kokia, Kokia? Yeah. In, in the Indonesia, I can't say, I can say Kokia, but I can't say Indonesia. Uh, anyway, local fishermen have captured uh, and caged two 
Dung gongs. Dugong. Dugongs. <laughs> you don't know dugong. Dugong. <laughs> <laughs> or as they call them, the underwater cows. But the worst thing is they're also kept up, chained up, caged up, so they couldn't escape. Yeah, so they were cool. in their own cages. They changed the back part of their tail, um, so they couldn't turn properly. And in all honesty, yeah, it was a very sad life. For them. Yeah, and all sad. all to increase tourism trade. Yeah, they were they were trying to sort of get people to come and then charge them to take pictures and videos. And they were like, oh yeah, you can jump in and play with them if you want. Yeah, but that was why they got caught. So mm. someone posted images of these poor little sea cows um, on the internet, on social media, and then obviously it blew up. So the images went online, and then within seconds, thank you very much, James. Keep going. Authorities there contacted you. the person who'd posted the article and all the pictures, and then within hours of them talking to him, they'd been freed out of their cages to live their normal life. Yeah, they put it on Twitter, and then um, the sort of local authorities like, Okay, where is this exactly? <laughs> um, we'll sort it out. Yeah, so. and luckily that was, so yeah, that was good. It didn't take months and months and months or years and years and years. It was literally a couple of hours. Yeah. And then boom. Yeah, so, so it goes to show if you guys see anything uh, that you don't really agree with, take a picture of it, put it on um, social media and um, kind of tag local authorities. And I'd yeah. better take a picture of James to produce it then. I don't really, he needs to go. He's dangerous. Yeah, he's very dangerous. Anyway. I told you it had a happy ending. Oh yeah, uh, da, 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 and that's where we're uh, and that's where we're gonna leave this week's uh, skewer tube. Uh, if you missed it, check out last week's Weird Wednesday by clicking the link above us. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and safe diving. Bye.